Yes, right there. Okay. So welcome to Teacher Seat and Teachers. And we have, I, it, it's funny calling you a guest. We have an old friend um, <laughs> who we've invited as a guest. And we have a couple of students here who have been um, bubbling up um, with uh, different work um, chatbots that they've been creating. Um, and Kirsten um, and David and Andrea Zellner is uh, going to introduce herself in a second, and Christina Cantrell. Welcome, everybody. Why don't we do very quick um, introductions and just say we'll end with you, um, Andrea. And uh, Kirsten, why don't you start? Okay. Hi. Good evening. I'm Kirsten Bradley. I'm in um, Hampton Roads, Virginia area, southeastern Virginia. Um, I'm a recently retired high school English teacher, and now I am adjuncting in the um, in a couple of local universities in my area freshman composition classes and which writing project again just to remind um tide water writing project Tidewater. through old dominion university cool lovely to have you here um kirsten has has been figuring out now comment figuring out ai yes and emailing me and saying how do they go together what's going on here anyway. <laughs> yes <laughs> So we've had nice conversations. So yes, welcome. Nice, you. nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, David, you look like you went out, but maybe, are you still there? Yeah, there you go. Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is David Cole. I'm in Berkeley, California. I was a former writing teacher for many years, and then I worked in education technology, and in that context, had the chance to work with writing project teachers like uh, Paul and Andrea and Christina. And I'm thinking about AI uh, with them. And so it's nice to be here. David, I, I like to just remind everybody that you were sort of the force behind what would you call electronic notebooks? Uh, is that the proper term? <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Um, and you're I still was, doing some of that work, yeah. Yeah, I still am. Very briefly, I was working at a museum and had to uh, find a put together a wayfinding tool for a museum. And we wanted to, with a notebook and as a writing person i thought why can't we make the notebook a little more interactive and i discovered that people were putting electronics on the paper and i found a, a researcher and a designer at mit who was making that into a consumer product like a sticker and i uh, thought gosh could we tell stories with um, introductory electronics in a notebook and reached out to the writing project folks who were very eager and very supportive. And so that was the context in which we did uh, what we called your Hack Your Notebook series. And that was the first time I met Andrea, actually, at, at a, the 213 annual meeting of the National Writing Project where we presented that and sort of, uh, yeah, so it was 10 years ago, actually, this fall, that that stuff went out and starting to make out wow. and around. So, so that's what and I'm was. thinking. Yeah. And I'm thinking Nate and Sam want to know more about it, but. <laughs> yeah. just, well, happy right, to tell guys, you if you're interested. Sure. Guys, yeah, we'll get it. Nate, do you want to introduce yourself and uh, say what you've been, just say a little bit about what you've been working on. Sure. I'm Nate Zrebeck. I go to uh, William Anna Middle School in Basking Ridge. I'm in Jill Stradonsky's class in New Jersey. Uh, in eighth grade. I've been working with Sam on Now Comment and Youth Voices to make AI like tools and chatbots. Um, cool. And what, uh, cool. just describe one of them that you've made. Uh, one of the ones uh, me and Sam are working on right now, it's like you, it's an AI that can be like anybody. So we're trying to um, make it so that you can give it a personality and then within that chatbot, so you don't have to create a new chatbot every time you want it to be a different personality. So it can like take the role of any personality and then give you um, like thoughts about your writing. Very interesting. So, so like, I, I think I, I, what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, so the user says, I'm a kind person. And, and then if you say that, then the chatbot responds with kindness too, right? Yeah. Is that, uh -huh. Okay. Anyway, as you can tell, we're learning from you guys. So, um, Sam. Uh, I'm Sam Q. I go to William Annan in Basking Ridge. I'm also in the same class as Nate in Jill Stadronsky's eighth grade class. <clears throat> and as like we've been working on now comment and youth voices to make like uh, chat bots and thinking partners. And yeah, basically what he said, we've just been experimenting with different ones like book thought helpers, conversationals and like email writers. So, yeah. 
And you tried to make one that uh, sounds like The Rock as well, right? Do you want to <laughs> describe that one a little bit? Well, that's like the same uh, conversational AI, but I just told it to act like The Rock. And I kind of like used your advice last time. And you told me to like how your writing coach had three options at the end to continue talking about. I just added that to the thing and I told it to be like The Rock. And I asked it like personal questions, like if he knew Kevin Hart and that stuff. Cool, cool. Christina, welcome back. It's been a while, but yeah, it has been. You've been Thanks, busy. Hi. Yeah. everyone. Uh, Christina Cantrell. I'm uh, based in Philadelphia and connected with the Philadelphia Writing Project, but I um, work at the National Writing Project and have worked with. Andrea and David and Paul for many years. Nice to meet you, Nate and Sam and Kirsten. Cool, cool. So Andrea, go ahead, introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us what you've been up to. And then the, our, our proposal here is to read a little bit of the article together, do some more conversation with um, Dr. Zellner. It's funny oh, calling boy. that, but I like to respect <laughs> that, that work you've done there. The, um, <laughs> And um, and and then to make some comments, just kind of regular comments, traditional comments on now comment. So if you haven't gone there yet, you want to click on the article that's on the table right above Christina, or right there, and and go to that article. Um, and then talk a little more to Andrea. Then come back and try to do some AI work, which is a little funny because you wrote the article with AI. Now we're going to respond to it with AI. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's what got me so excited. I was like, wow, okay. how meta can we get with this? <laughs> Wild. Okay. So talk wow. to us a little bit about who you are, what you've been up to, and, and what this article is about. And then we'll get to the article. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so as Paul said, my name is Dr. Andrew Zeller, which sounds so serious, but... Um, what, your, I, what, your, what did you study to get that doctor? That's worth. I right. studied educational psychology and educational technology. So when I was in grad school, I researched first. Um, digital badges were first coming on the scene when I was starting my research, and so I first studied how digital badges, like on Khan Academy, impacted learning. And I looked at uh, Khan Academy and Substack actually. And then uh, I started to look at how people's motivation changed based on how their online environments look. So how much interaction there is and how many visuals versus all text-based. And so we looked at that. And then mm -hmm. finally, I ended my research in grad school looking at how peer feedback on writing. So this is really close to my heart. Like my little heart got so excited about what you all are doing with the thought partners here because I was looking at how uh, peer feedback impacts writing achievements and we found some like interesting things about how uh, it's almost the giving of the feedback that is the magic in improving mm -hmm. writing. So there's just something about that meta piece and there's been a, a so, whole so thread. Teachers, of so teachers become very good writers. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. The act of if you can move yourself away from copy editing and really start to give language to what's working in a piece and what's not working in a piece, that really moves your own writing forward. So it's interesting to me the implications of having AI in this space because, of course, I think for a long time we thought that writing feedback like you're telling me what's working and what's not working and then i go back and fix it and that's the mechanism for how we learn but there is some evidence to suggest that the mechanism is really the thinking through uh of what is working what isn't working so i i'm so curious how ai is gonna impact that because on the one hand you could say oh Maybe because I'm not doing that metacognitive work of trying to figure out what's working and not working in a piece, um, I'm not going to be able to move forward. Also, the AI is modeling really nice feedback, and that can be really a useful way to learn too. So, like, it could go either way. We don't know. So, yeah, anyway, well, that's, let me allow me to yeah. interrupt you. I know. Anybody have any thoughts or questions to 
start. I have a question yeah. about that. When you say model, I mean, your point was really well taken, Andrea, that it can, maybe it's just going to remove the metacognition and the think, the act of thinking you do at the same time. Your point that it's modeling a scaffold, so to speak. And I'm wondering if you've encountered any examples of prompt structures or guidance sort of preloading that orients the AI to do the kind of thoughtful um, scaffolding that you would you that you would think would be a, an, a reasonable representation of good sort of active thinking as it's been rendered by a machine versus just like hey resummarize like this boom oh but yeah. oh I, you know what i mean it's like kind of model an articulation that's that's quite personal and nuanced at least as we might experience it as a, as a user i'm curious if you've encountered that well, what I think has been really interesting is what Youth Voices and now Common and Paul and this group have been doing with taking writing, like what good teachers of writing have always known and prompting chat bots or chat GPT or whatever is running behind these uh, thinking partners to respond in that same way. So you're almost doing this training. So I, I feel like what Nate and Sam are doing, playing around with prompting your thinking partners to give you the feedback you want is doing a lot of that cognitive work that maybe we used to do uh, by looking at other people's writing. So I, I, it's very interesting to me, but the chatbots themselves, I think have been trained by the time they got to the consumer level. There was a lot of training. There was a lot of pre models uh, be, before the, it got so hot and in our little hands, yeah. uh, there were so many examples of like Hemingway or um, even Grammarly. Those were earlier iterations of this. And so it got pretty yeah. good at like understanding sentence structure. Um, in fact, even when I was doing my dissertation in like 2015, we were playing around with language models to look at the student writing then just because I had like 600 students and <laughs> all of their essays <laughs> in my study. So it was so big. I was like, uh, how can I read all these? So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting to think about how good it is really at giving suggestions, even without a ton of prompting. Mm. It's okay. just trained really well. And so, I, I, and before before uh, we started recording and everything, I think Sam, you said uh, you're liking it because you're the uh, what you what did you say? You're the, the oh the master of AI. Say say that again and say <laughs> what you mean by that. Yeah, I said that. Like I think I said in a previous meeting that like. You're yeah. like the creator of your own AI, which means basically your AI can be personalized for you. Like if you want help on English, you can personalize it to like help me spark ideas if you're in like a creative slump. And that's why I like AI so much because it's just like a base platform where you can like branch off into so many places that you want to explore. Cool, cool. And I want to give Nate, you don't have to say anything, but <clears throat> you want to jump in with any thoughts before we go to the article or or Kirsten as well? Yeah, anybody? No, I think Sam covered it. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. So I, I um, Kirsten joined us last week and we were like in the middle of something ch showing how to build chatbots. And he's like, how do you, how do you get the article? So I'm going to go back to the basics and say this. If you click on the the article, the um, the title of the article in the middle here, I'm going to share my screen, and but I want you on a different tab to be able to work on it as well. Um, asking the right question, I'm sharing that screen now. That's correct, and then I'm going here. Everyone sees that? Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. So. I'm I'm going to go back to the uh, sort of very basic now comment, right? And um, there is a button right here. You upload. What I did is I took Andrea's online article and I, you know, highlighted the whole I the HTML version of it. Um, it is Creative Commons, by the way. Um, I, and so we put it up here. We we cited it. So it's here. And what this allows us to do is go in and 
click on either a sentence or a paragraph or the entire document and make a comment ourselves. All right. Anybody have any questions about how that setup works? Right. I know I skip over a lot of the basics sometimes. So I want to make sure. And I'm waiting a second. Okay. Please interrupt as we go. Um, just to say, it. Um, in this case, Andrew, you could get feedback on your own writing. <laughs> but um, other, but you could also put up your own writing and, and, and do this as well, or an article. So those are sort of the two ways we can go. Um, I want to start with Andrew coming back to you and asking you to introduce this article, and then maybe at some point jump into reading the just the abstract to us, and then all of us go in and comment on the abstract, paragraph two. Is everybody on the article? Give me a thumbs up or a yell out. Yeah, you're on the article. You're good. Anybody I'm having difficulty finding it? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Wait, no difficulty. You found it. Okay. Okay. So, Andrea, go for it. So, what well, is yeah. what this is, how did, how did I get to an Irish journal is the real question. But a good that friend is, of mine. Yes, that, that, that is a good question. I was wondering, like, how's, what's that as a publishing channel, Andrea? Can you explain that? Yeah, so a good friend of mine is just took a, an appointment, a university appointment in Ireland. And mm. so she used to live here in Michigan. And I started texting her actually about what Paul and Chris were doing. And I'm like, you should see what they are doing with AI. Cause I've just been a little bit obsessed with AI and like really curious. And, um, and also in my work, I'm supporting districts and how do they respond? And I'm working with English teachers. Like, what do we do? And there's all this plagiarism. Anyway, so that was kind of, I'm kind of just chatting with her. And she's like, you know, what's really funny is I am guest editing the Irish journal of technology enhanced learning, and we are inviting people to write with AI in a very specific structure. So the call was very, very specific. They have a few different journal article types that they take. One is a position paper, uh, one's a book uh, review. I forget what some of the other ones were, but you had to follow those submission guidelines, but you wrapped around it with your own reflections on writing with chat GPT or whatever model you wanted. So I got, I played around with a lot of models. So she'll, if you read the whole thing, you'll see that I really went on a hunt to find the one that would work for me. Um, I'm as new as everybody. Like I was just talking to someone else and they were saying, you never really know anything with AI. You're like, if you're ahead, you're only about two seconds ahead. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was muddling about with my own prompting. So uh, the question that I really was stuck on is almost like this big existential meaning of life kind of question, which is when we have robots <laughs> for, <laughs> that can do this for us, uh, why still learn? Why still write? Why do we do this? What are we doing here together um, in all of our schools and, and learning communities? So that was kind of what I thought would be interesting to see what the models said. So that was uh, how the paper came to be. And it went through the same peer review process as you would expect. And then I also acted as a reviewer on some of the other submissions. So, and there was a lot of submissions, so it ended up being a little competitive, but um, yeah, I went through the normal scholarly experience, <laughs> but in 81 days, which is like unheard of. I mean, some journals take years to publish your article. Wow. So like to go from call to publication in 81 days is like never ever happened. Well, in with, the history. with AI, we almost need that, right? Because yeah, um, yeah. Things that they did some. So, I, so I'm going to propose that everyone will be ready to um, make, we'll get quiet for a while after Andrew, if you don't mind reading the abstract. Sure. And then, and then we'll just all comment on paragraph two or a sentence in paragraph two. And I'll give a, a couple more instructions right after you read. Okay. So here's the abstract. 
as educators grapple with the impact of generative artificial intelligence or AI and the ease of access to these models by learners, questions of pedagogy and learning have dominated the conversation. This paper explores the concerns of teaching through exploring the contrast between human and machine learning and the implications of both on educators facing an environment where AI is prevalent. Mm -hmm. Through a prompting process, a position paper was generated by ChatGPT 3.5 on these contrasts and implications. The AI output, largely accurate, highlighted strategies for educators while also showcasing the limitations of the tool. Educators and scholars can support themselves and their students through critical reflection of the use of AI tools. Okay, so I want to encourage you to, and I'm giving my example here, go to paragraph two, double click on the number two. I'm saying this for basic, some of you know all of that already. Um, and you can either comment on the whole paragraph by making a summary of your comment in the top box, and then more extended comments below. You can add images if you'd like or a video. Um, but and let me show you if I want to just comment on largely accurate, uh, which I do, um, <laughs> I, I would double click on the sentence. So notice this sentence now. I'm now going to comment on the sentence. I'm going to make my summary here and then my more extended comment below. All right, we're not doing AI now. We're just uh, responding to this paragraph as humans. All right, so let's give uh, five minutes for that. Any to this questions? paragraph or to the piece? I, yeah, I, you could, if you've read the piece, you can. I just, yeah, you, you can go anywhere you want. Okay. But I want to encourage you to start with the abstract. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You will notice that you only see your comments at first. Um, there is, when you refresh your browser, you'll see other people's comments as well.
just want to encourage Sam and Nate, this might be your first time annotating on a text, and it's a kind of deep text. But don't worry, anything you put up is fine. Just, just to say. All right, I'm looking at the clock a little bit here. Let's uh, make refresh your browser, see if you see other comments. Let's give it just a couple more minutes. Maybe you could reply to somebody else's comment. Or finish up the one you're working on. Okay, let's um, come back from the article a little bit and just talk to Andrea. Um, who would like to ask her a question? Who would like to ask Dr. Zellner a question about what you've read so far in the article instead of me doing it? <laughs> Uh, and I'm just going to say, oh, yeah, like, you, you could jump. In. I wanted to say, like, this is, I started, like, Paul pitched this to me, whatever it was, a couple days ago. And I thought, oh my God, how cool, how fun. And then all I started to panic today. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's so hard to put your writing up and then face readers, and there's nothing you can do about it at this point because it's published and it's done. So I just had to name that. Thank you for being gentle with me. <laughs> Lots of questions. Anybody has? Let me call on Sam or Nate. You guys have any thoughts you want to start with? Well, I know she said earlier, like, the point of this was to ask <clears throat> the AI itself, like, what yep. the meaning of life really was when AI <laughs> is going to take over. And I think that's a really cool thought. I like that it's, summary, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. Going. Why I think is it Nate a cool was thought? writing on it in, like, language arts class about how AI might take over the world. But um, I think that asking AI what the point of life is when AI is going to take over and can do everything. I think it's a pretty cool concept. Well, obviously me too. <laughs> I spent a lot of so time is that, is, it. Is he on track? Is that close to what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't quite the meaning of life. What I was asking it about was really the meaning of schooling and teaching and learning. Um, so like you spent a lot of time in school, right? Sam and Nate, <laughs> you go there a lot. And 
sometimes uh, I I get to go to a lot of different schools, and sometimes I am sitting in a parking lot watching all these buses come in, all these parents drop off their kids, and there's just in 15 minutes, 800 people just show up at a building, or a thousand people, or 2,000 people just show up all at the same time, and they all leave at the same time. And I think, oh my gosh, it takes so much work when you think about person by person by person to get a school going. And mm-hmm. it seems like if we're going to put that much work in it, that we should be doing something really meaningful with that time we have together. And so now that AI is uh, writing all this amazing stuff and creating all these beautiful images, I think it's like a real question to ask it, well, why should me as a lowly human who'll never get to read the billions and billions of texts that this model has read and consumed the billions of images this model has consumed, why should I as a lowly human continue to try to be creative and make things uh, when this robot can do it for me? So I wondered what it thought about that. <laughs> yeah, jump in, folks. If you, This is time for a conversation. <laughs> you have another thought. Um, I was just picking up on sort of like uh, you talk about sense making and grappling and like, like there's all these feelings in there, right? Just even the first two like paragraphs have so many feelings. So I guess I was thinking about the, like the role of, of those feelings in, in the question you're asking, you know, like where do those feelings fit into all of this? Um, anyway, that's just what it got me thinking about. Well, yeah, that was like, the, this is the most feely, touchy, feely paper I've ever written. And I think, honestly, like as a writer, co-writing with ChatGPT on purpose, for this purpose, <laughs> made, I, I said this last time we were together, Paul, like I find, I find what the chatbot produces kind of boring. Like I really struggle to read it when other people put it out in the world. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to read it. I get kind of resistant yeah. to it. Yeah, you and published maybe... it. I... Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And so I found myself being much more creative and effusive and like emotional in my own, whereas like normally as a scholar, I'm like very serious in my writing and very, you know, scientific or whatever. And I just completely went the other direction with this. It's unlike any other scholarly article I've written because I felt like I had to assert me, my humanity in those moments where I had them <laughs> because so much of it was written by AI. So Andrea, want... could you, I had a question, Paul. Andrea, ahead, when yeah, I'm sure. skimming it, I, I stuck, I stayed, I read the article a while back when mm-hmm. I first, well, you shared it from the last time, I think. And I just focused only on the abstract and, and thinking about what Christina's saying in terms of the feelings that are there. I just was scanning the first couple paragraphs. And the first person voice, of course, is very strong. And I just wanted to understand the way you went about writing. Were you were you making drafts and then jamming them into the AI and seeing what you wanted and then editing it? Was it an active thing? Or was, when, was it completely just sort of written whole cloth, like you prompted it to say, write in first person, here's what I think, go. And you did it iteratively that way. How, what was the actual workflow or the... How did that? How did you assemble the body that you the body of material that you got, like paragraph or voice or what did you? Yeah. What, what, what was your method? Yeah. So to speak? Yeah. So the method as, was as uh, you're talking. I think I can point to what you're saying. But go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the call for proposals, and I was just bringing it up because, uh, and I ran out of time to add it to a comment, but I will. The call for proposals was really specific in where how mm-hmm. they wanted things done. So. The introduction could not be generated with AI. So they told us exactly okay. where you could use AI and where you could not. So uh, got it. The, the purpose was to sort of take a snapshot at this moment in time of how scholars could interact and use this as writers. And so it okay. was a way to build our critical AI literacy is literally what they said in the call. So there was an introduction that was between 500 and 1,000 words that had to be written by you as a scholar and you had to talk about your relationship to AI. So that's right off the bat, I'm doing that, talking about my relationship. 
yeah. my rationale for the topic, um, yeah. uh, a transparent and detailed description of the tools I use and the prompting methods. So you were supposed to include all of those details in there. Okay. So and, your introduction is paragraphs four, five, and six, seven. Yep. And then yeah, I wanted you to go to this and describe your prompting a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had many failed prompts, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I do talk about more in the discussion. Um, so I found like Sam and Nate, just a scene thing where you have to give it kind of a persona. Like I, for this, I had to be like, you are writing a, it's a scholarly article. I had to use that kind of language. It has to be APA format. You have to include citations. I had to really tell it what to do. And then um, I just couldn't, no matter how much I crafted that initial prompt, I could not get it to do what I wanted it to do. So I have actually all the output of all the failed promptings on lots of different, I used BARD, I used ChatGPT 3, 3.5, 4, because over the course of the call, this became available. Um, I used- Andrew, I, I, just, I just wanna put a pin in that and, and say, yeah. say that like this process produces so much stuff yeah, your yeah, your readers. You don't want to drag your readers through that whole process, but so it's interesting to hear you describe it. But yeah, I yeah, it was so hard to like synthesize it all. Anyway, mm -hmm. I don't want to digress, but that this is what I ended up doing. I got the output that was initial initially there, and what I found was, when as a scholar, like when you're writing for publication. They tell you how many words you have to have, just like your English teacher does. <laughs> Where they're like, you need five paragraphs. Um, they tell mm -hmm. you the same thing when you're writing for grown-up things. And so I told AI, the chat different AI right. things I was using. Uh, I need two thousand words. That was how many words I needed. I could not get it to write two thousand words. So then I thought, okay. I know how to do this. I was a ninth grade English teacher for a really long time. <laughs> so I started to say, okay, revise it, add a little more here, add a little more there. And so this sequence that you see here with the one, two, three, four was the most, mm -hmm. I got the most output here uh, with the least amount of prompting. So but that's these, the one These I are the most on. successful prompts you made. Yes, that, those were the most uh -huh. successful prompts. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Okay. And, and you did these, Iteratively, yep. these weren't all in one prompt. These are separate prompts over Right, time. so I put prompt mm -hmm. one in, it spit out some output, and I said, great, now revise that response, as you can see, by adding a detailed discussion of. And so I was working it through the paper. As So that's really where I feel like the co-authoring happened because I had to keep t pushing it to do those things. And I did not edit it too much except for any redundancies. So when I was asking it to revise, it might repeat a little bit of what it had previously said. Um, but I, so I just removed those redundancies and really copied and pasted it right, in, right in here. Cool, cool. Um, I'm, I'm watching the time. <laughs> I feel like I'm rushing, but um, let's interrupt. Uh, so what what's below, uh, paragraph 14, and you might be looking at your own version or on screen. I am sharing on screen too, yes? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, so this is all, you're giving credit to chat GPT here, but you've, how, how much editing did you do for what's here? Or you were just describing Very that, little. I know. Okay. Yep, very little. I just mostly deleting <laughs> redundancies, yeah. I didn't edit the citations. I didn't. I didn't fix anything at all, because the I was surprised that the citations worked. Did, were you, or did you? Think yes. Like that or, uh -huh. I was surprised that it worked. This is ChatGPT like, three point three point five. With me, yeah. Yeah, and you know. So I used to have to teach like brand new grad students and they would have to like do their like first little bits of understanding the whole, all of the literature and that kind of thing. And uh, for most people who are like coming into the scholarly world, 
you want to push them to more recent citations, right? Like you don't want to be mm-hmm. going back to Vygotsky. I mean, obviously that's a, he's really an important scholar in the field of like understanding how people learn, but we've done a lot since then. And so it was really reaching for like very highly cited articles that were old. So I think that that was interesting to me to see mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Especially well, when you I, consider like we have like fMRIs now and like all kinds of crazy cognitive science in there. It, it did not grab any of that. So, so if you were to add your voice more in here, you would look for those those sources. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So I think if it were me writing to that same idea of like the difference between human learning and machine learning, not these points are not they're not elucidated enough. There's not enough evidence. There's no warrants. There's just like statements. It's just Uh like stance, 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 which is I think what makes it kind of boring. There's no variation really in how it's reading. And so even that I'm just, um, I, I would, I would really want more and almost less maybe like, you know, I let it really roll. I don't know that I would jam all this into a paper myself <laughs> because mm-hmm. these are, mm-hmm. are all yeah. very big ideas throughout this and each one could be their own paper. So that's kind of the other thing that's interesting here. And the other thing too is that like uh, scholars generally are picking very small questions to talk about because they're finding one little thing that we don't know. And so they're not really encompassing this whole thing unless they're writing a textbook or something. Talk a little bit about the third section here. And then So the then, third yeah. section was again part of the call. And mm-hmm. I uh, like I said, I'm gonna try and throw it in there, but the reflection process was uh, what did it get wrong? So you pinged on like how accurate it was. They were in the call very and in the review process wanting to know exactly how accurate it was. Like what did it get right? What did it get wrong? So it was a fact checking kind of exercise a little bit of what the AI spit out. So that was kind of interesting. So we reflected on the process. So a lot of what I just kind of talked through about how the difficulties Mm -hmm. I had with prompting it and that kind of thing. Um, How long did the process take? I mean, I took that particular output came up pretty quick, but it was, I spent a lot of time playing with different, um, different interfaces and whatnot to get that out. And then we were to reflect on the implications. And again, Christina, that was where I really found, I mean, this was full Andrea voice through there. There was like, no, I felt like I was getting real saucy in the reflection more than I would ever let myself get in a scholarly (laughs) work. So. Cool, cool. Okay. All right. I I want to I want to don't know where to focus us, but um, really you could go anywhere. I'm going to give <laughs> an example. I'm I, I'm I'm saying that to I I want to I want people to play with and do some AI responding. Um, I think you could stay in the abstract. I want to give you a a couple of um, pointers on this. And um, there are at least three of you here who haven't done this before. So um, I'm going to kind of show you this. I'm going to go to paragraph two, right? And then I'm going to, I double clicked on the number. Then I'm going to ask AI. And when you go into this, I want to point out that the there are some that are for your own writing, in which case, Andrea, you could use those but you don't want to use those for a text that somebody else has written, all right? Um, Or you can, but anyway, let's just say that for now. The, um, I want to encourage you to go all the way down in in the, um, and I know you don't see the pop-up here, but I'm going to say this. Um, I don't think you do, right? Um, I want to suggest that you use a, sorry. I'm meant to make this more clear, but here we go. Um, There is a reading, there it is. Use the breaking it down simulator first. 
Um, uh, and uh, you can see the prompt here on the right side. This simulator acts like a teacher who has been trained in the reading apprenticeship approach, right? And what it's going to do is it's going to break down the first, I think it's the first 25 words. Yeah, 25, 50 words. And, and, it's, and then it's going to chunk it out and help you understand the text. Use that one and then use another one that you want to use just for the fun of it. Use maybe an improvisational teammate. That's a good one to use. Okay. Um, Nate and Sam, if you want to use one that you've created, and by the way, they can see them. We can't yet, <laughs> but uh, you can do that. So let's see. So what you do, I'll do the breaking. You choose the breaking it down. You then ask it a question. And then you hit continue and you get a response. Now you could, we don't have a lot of time, but you could go in and edit that response. Um, but you want to put it up as a comment so we can kind of see it kind of quickly here tonight. Was that somewhat clear? <laughs> Um, you can't go wrong. You can't break this. Let's try. See what you can come up with. So the breaking down one, just I, I know you're kind of is it talks to you. It says, okay, we're going to break down the first part. Here's the first chunk. Oh, look at the word grapple, right? And it kind of pulls and talks about that. So kind, and then when I'm ready to put it up, I hit start conversation, and that goes up here. All right, so get some AI responses to the abstract and or anywhere else in the article you'd like to. It's so funny, an hour goes so fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you have any questions or thoughts, just yell them out because somebody else probably does too.
Okay. I am, I do not have the perfect question to ask here. I am going to just ask you what this was like for you, what you're thinking about. Um, maybe we could look at a couple of them. Um, Nathan, Nate, could we come to you? You there? Yeah. You used the reply with AI, right? Yes. And which one did you, oh, you used the breaking down. So what do you, how do you feel about, I mean, your teacher asks you, asks you to do this all the time. So I mean, she asks you to reflect like this all the time. So let me, how, what did you think of what the AI gave you here? Uh, I think right. it has, it, it was helpful. It really helped like to understand it more. Hmm. Uh, and I, I think yeah. it had like good, um, like, so it's actually commenting on your comment, right? Yeah. Just to say. Sorry, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? Well, it, it was... No, because it, it had the... Um, the quotes were from the piece. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, it is. Okay, good, good. Cool, cool. Other thoughts? Other responses? What did you do? Maybe just report back to us here. <laughs> Christina, are you there? I'll see you also. I am. Um, I just used the breaking down one because I mm -hmm. was I was got a little caught up in trying to pick a second one. <laughs> um, but. Um, I think it was helpful. I guess one question, one thing I noticed is that um, it was breaking down that first paragraph. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's breaking down the last sentence of the first paragraph, I think. Oh, I think that's what you chose. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of meant the mm -hmm. sentence before, but um, mm -hmm. it does say something about to improve teaching methodologies implies that there's a need for better ways of teaching. Um, and I was wondering, well, some people might say there's need for better ways of teaching. You know, it's like, I'm, I don't know. I, I was wondering like whose opinion was, who was speaking, I guess, was one of the mm -hmm. questions I realized I needed to know more about, mm. even though I could sort of understand the, it helped me break down the actual right. ideas. Andrea, do you want to comment on what you got or? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anybody. So, so I, I know there's like, there's a lot of text coming at everyone. Yeah, I get it's it. so much. But, yeah. And it's so strange to have like written this and like knowing to have AI then talking back to it is just so weird and fun. I'm just like delighted. Um, it, I picked the paragraph with, the quote from Mother Cyborg and Mimi Anuha, um, because I just mm -hmm. really love this metaphor. And I thought, well, wonder what it would make of this metaphor of uh, the, the hammer and the bulldozer. Um, mm. So I thought it really honed in on that metaphor too. And it was uh, helping, now I've lost it, but, um, it was I have it trying. On the oh, you have it on the screen. Okay. So yeah, it was uh, breaking that metaphor down, which was nice because sometimes metaphor can be hard to get a hold of. And then I really like the questions that the thinking partner came up with. And I think that's been really what's been making me excited about what like Sam and Nate, what your class is doing with having it come up with good questions because sometimes asking the, that's the name of my title, but asking the right questions is really, really important because if we don't have the right question, then we're not spending time on something that's worthwhile. And that is a really tough skill 
to get and the AI seems to come up with some good questions. Others I, I thought it gave a lot of information, um, probably more information than I needed, but it prompted me to actually go in and read what the AI said and to kind of analyze that a little bit further instead of taking it at face value. So that that part I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks for playing along here. <laughs> I know this is kind of new to you. So. Sam, are you raising your hand? Oh, Aww. don't. Sam, just jump in. Please. Paul, I haven't forgotten Paul you. Paul wants you always jumping in. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. I'm so used to school. <laughs> you do I just got to make it till Friday because that's winter <laughs> break. <laughs> well, so thank you for jumping in. Now, I, this is actually the first time you've used AI next to a text, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I used no. uh, me and Nate's conversational hybrid on this one. Uh huh. Oh, where is that? So let me put that. Maybe. You oh, so you use your own. Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. so excited to see it. Yeah, but we told uh, I told it to be Bob Ross and comment on the paragraph, <laughs> and it uh, I think it was talking. Uh, it doesn't really go full in depth about how the paragraph is, but since it's a conversational one, it talks a little bit about how. Um, like paragraph this paragraph, uh -huh. like the words are painted out on the canvas, and like how, <clears throat> like talking and uh writing is art. It also like that middle paragraph states a lot about how the it's just like a quick summary of what the paragraph is, and then mm -hmm. it goes back to you. And then it, like since it's a conversational AI, it does go back and like ask you things like how's your day going but i think it's pretty cool that i can tell it to be like a famous person and it can that quickly just like go take up all that information about bob ross and how he speaks and put it down onto that one uh response and so, and so the idea of these thinking partners is, is that you would hit reply ai um right and and then you could continue as bob ross or or you could Jump somebody else in there too, the way you guys have designed this. Anyway, so uh, pretty fascinating. Uh, David, do you have any thoughts? Just want to circle around to everyone. Well, whatever. Um, I just grabbed a sentence about um, Andreas, part of a, Andrea, part of your reflection about how you were inclined to go and revise versus going back into the prompt, you know? And um, the system, I mean, it's such a human thing to want to revise and the pro and, and the system likes to be prompted, right? And it's a whole nother level of thinking. And I was really struck by that. Um, and I, I, I need to read the paper again, thinking about all the things that are coming up here. Wow. And I was saying, and, and the AI, yeah. the AI prompt, I asked it to do, a, I forget the prompt I, chose was the um yeah the background knowledge so i wanted it i wanted uh -huh. to see what kind of background knowledge you could provide relative to your description of how your inclination andrea there was to simply begin to edit and to revise okay. versus the background knowledge that's presumed around the the uh the prompt generation like no let's not let's not just revise the ai says let's Let's just fix our prompting. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm anthropomorphizing. I'm making the AI a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seemed to get at the central tension there, you know. And so that's where I went. Fascinating. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for jumping in on this experiment. And Nate, by the way, I saw where you, where you were going with this. Um, Others, there are things we have missed here, but um, I think we want to kind of, kind of final thoughts anybody has. And Andrew, you can start that off. <laughs> oh, I just want to thank you all for uh, doing this with me. It's really fun to see it take on a, a life here with your conversations and like, what a gift. And usually you write these things and you never even know people right now. So this was a real, real fun for me. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan. And yeah. Th and one of the, one of the thoughts I want to say is that even though it got really rushed at the end and all that, 
I never want to skip over the conversation, the first go in as a human and then go in with the AI. All of that context feels really important to me. Other thoughts as we're leaving? Sam, your hand's up. I see it. <clears throat> uh, I think, like, uh, one of my major, like, benefits or one of the things I think is the best about AI is how it can provide education. And uh, just, like, commenting on, like, this feature of now comment, like, in how it can provide education without having to have, like, a friend or another person. You can have a, like, peer editor or, like, a peer to review your work and give you thoughts and other um, comments on your work, just like a normal human and like a like a friend would. Nice thought, thank you. But I, I, I would just point out though, that even though you just said that, you and Nate <laughs> have, have like formed a partnership and like you talk to each other about this stuff all the time. So it, it's not either or in that way at all, right? You know what I mean by that? It, it's not like you're just talking to the computer. You talk to other kids too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. And no one's suggesting that we all give up all of our friendships and social <laughs> connections to talk, talk to yeah. Now comments thinking partners all day. <laughs> well, I mean, Tesla made like a new AI bot <laughs> that Nate was looking at. I mean, maybe they'll replace our friends too. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> Me too. Nate, any final thoughts? Thank you for jumping in the way you did today. Uh, no, I think... So with the AI piece, can like anybody publish a piece or do you have to like, get it reviewed first? Oh, so um, for, for this piece or for now comment? Like now comment. You mean, yeah, I need to get, you mean a thinking partner? Who publishes the thinking partner? Yeah, like. That's me. Okay. <laughs> except that, except that like you and Nate can publish to each other, right? By publishing to your group. Yeah. And then your teacher can also publish to the whole school if she'd like to. Um. But yeah, just just uh, let me know which one, and and we'll get we'll get them published. Yeah, we'll do okay. that. Not a problem. Yeah, we're, and we're still working out some of that flow. But yeah, that's a good question, Kirsten. Thank you so much. Um, I think you had to go, um, or do you have any last thoughts, man, Christina? Oh, thank anything? you. I appreciate it. All right. Are we, are we dragging you along or are you kind of getting it? <laughs> I, I I worry about you. Oh, yeah, it, it's making more it. sense. <laughs> yeah, I just have to spend some more time playing with it. Cool, cool. Christina, thank you. For yeah, thank you. It. I appreciate the uh, putting the human question, the conversation that we started um, and then going into it. I appreciate that way of working. Cool. And thanks for sharing this, Sandra. I'm going to read it now <laughs> all right yeah. thank, thank you. you all okay thanks you guys thanks go. andrea thanks nathan yeah 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 bye bye thank, thank you, you. Bye. Bye. and you will get to you will get to friday i promise you guys yeah <laughs> best wishes bye talk to Wait, you how do you get out now uh, you, <laughs> okay. just, you just turn it off yeah yeah. Oh really? They got rid of the lobby, the the out button or whatever. Well, you can go back to the lobby in the chat if you'd like, but generally you can just turn it off. Mm, okay. At least I haven't okay. found another way. To do it.